F8 banked roads. Here's an example of a banked road. Now the banked road, you know, helps out when you're making a turn to have the road banked. And this one here comes from Cool Caesar, a Wikimedia, where the explanation is that the road was banked to fit a clover stack interchange into the existing footprint of what was formerly an interchange. So they were working with some road that was already built. But anyway, this gives you the picture of the slant, you know, where there is a slant here. And we're going to, you know, consider the bank road, you know, is having that angle theta. And we're gonna work with that to see what we can do. See if I can try to sketch something here. Go like that and go up like this a little bit. Come on down like that, maybe down like that. Something like that. And say that. There, that's some car here. There's the center. And there's angle, angle theta. So it's a little bit tilt. It's a little hard to draw this one. Okay. So if we go from the sketch to say the force diagram. I'm not going to tilt this because it's important we don't tilt this. The reason why you don't want to tilt this, I did that once many, many years ago and got into trouble. You don't want to tilt this because the circle is horizontal. And since the circle is horizontal, we need to choose the like minus x direction or toward at this point or toward the center as being the acceleration. So I'm going to go ahead and put the tilted road in with the angle theta. And then you have your normal force like this. And that will be angle theta there. And here you have mg, but there is no friction in this case, so we're basically finished. So this is the road surface. So now we're ready for the equations. And the equation here, say if this is my x direction, let's say I call this as positive toward the center. And I, I have this set up so I orient my axis so that the x is pointing toward the center when you go left. Then you have here n times the sine of theta is going to be ma, which is mv squared over r. And then here, the other direction, the y, would be n cosine theta minus mg equals zero. There is no friction. So here we have two equations. The second equation can be written as n cosine theta equals mg. And now these two equations, we can divide those, and then we'll get the tangent of theta is equal to the masses would cancel. We have v squared over g r and sine of theta over n cosine theta m v squared over r divided by m g m's cancel, and you get you get that. So that's the situation. See, the car needs to be moving so it doesn't slide down. If it were to just be at rest there, it would slide down since there's no friction. Okay, now we're gonna do the case where there's friction. And by the way, that was the solution. So I for solve. 
So now we're going to do the solution. Yeah, you could you could you could look at R being going to infinity. If R went to infinity and the curvature, you know, you were very gentle. Curvature is like having like no curvature. So if you have no curvature, then angle would be zero. You would need to tilt the road. The car would not slide down if it were at rest. Okay, so now we're gonna do the case two where we have friction. And let's say the road is designed so that if there were no friction, you could take the curve at 64 kilometers per hour. And that's 40 miles an hour. And say the radius of curvature is 200 point meters. It's about 660 feet. Now on a rainy day, then you're gonna need some minimum US. So the question is, what is the minimum US needed if we're going slower at 40, because if we go slower, say if there are no friction, we'd slide down. So we need here going slower at 40 kilometers an hour, it's 25 miles per hour. What is the minimum US needed? So let's go ahead and sketch this force diagram. And here would be the angle here for the road. So what's going to go up this way is going to be your friction that's helping you. See, mu n, and that mu is going to be a static, you know, a static case. Here we have the normal force. This angle is theta again. Notice that they're both complementary to that angle up here. I could have said that, it would have been nice to say that. They're just to remind folks how things are working. And then this is mg going down. And we have our forces, normal force, friction force, and then the mg. So then if we go with the force A toward that center, because it's, it's toward the center of the circle to the left, then N sine of theta, let's go ahead and make sure we have that N labeled, N sine of theta minus F cosine of theta is MB squared over R. And cosine of theta going up, plus now you got that friction, see, has a component going up, then that equals, I'm just going to hit and say that equals mg, so I can skip a step. I know normally I do minus mg equals zero, but you can do this. And then the friction is mu s. And even though the car is moving sideways, it's a static case, you slide down. You know, so the car is moving, the wheels are turning. So it's really a static situation sliding down. We're, we're not, the car is not sliding across the road. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, I'm gonna put this in here, and I got it in two places, and I'll put it in up here. So I put this in two places. I'll have n sine theta minus m u s n, and then the cosine theta is hitting that combination is m b squared over r, and then here I have n cosine of theta plus, and I put this in u s n. sine theta equals mg. Now when you do you know math like this, you, you just different ways of doing algebra. This is my preference because I'm gonna factor out the ends and divide the equations. That's the logic. 
So here I'm going to have, I had a friend in grad school that would kind of bracket pairs of equations as he went along. I thought that was neat. So here we have n sine of theta minus mu s cosine of theta equals m v squared over r and then n cosine of theta plus mu s sine of theta is mg and I'll go ahead and bracket these like my friend used to do keep track as you look back later a week later you can see that we're working with a pair here and now we're going to divide divide the equations so then we have the sine of theta minus mu s cosine of theta over cosine theta plus mu s sine of theta is equal to here the m's cancel and you'll have v squared over the g's in the denominator, g, r. Well, what are we after here? Well, we're after, ask for the coefficient of static friction. We really want to solve for the coefficient of static friction. So that's going to take some algebra. So we have the sine of theta minus mu s cosine of theta, I'm bringing this stuff on the right-hand side now, v squared over gr times cosine of theta plus mu s sine of theta. And really, really have to, to work stuff out here. This is v squared over gr cosine, and then I have the mu s v squared over gr the sine, because I want these mu s's on one side of the equation, say, is what I want. So I really want to get this on the other side of the equation and get this cosine one on the left. So I'm going to have the sine of theta, that's this one, and then minus v squared over gr cosine theta, that's this one. And I put this on the other side of the equation. So we'll have mu s v squared over gr sine of theta plus mu s cosine theta. Okay, now we're almost there. You see on this side, the mu s can come out. I have v squared over gr sine of theta plus cosine theta. So I'm getting, getting close to being finished, but I would like to divide by the, by the cosine here so I can get the tangent. Tangent's been nice in the past. Look, so I had tangent theta up there. So here, if I do that, I'll have the tangent of theta minus V squared over GR. And over here, I'll have mu S v squared over gr tangent of theta plus one. So I divide it by the cosine of theta. So that gave me a one here, gave me a tangent there, gave me a one here at the minus sign, and it gave me a tangent there. So now I divide by this and I got it. So let's do that. In other words, mu s is going to be the tangent of theta minus v squared over gr, that's this part. And then I'm dividing by all this. I'll put the one first, v squared over gr tangent of theta. So this is the equation. Now, this, this was designed with the v naught being given and that means it was designed so if there was no friction if this is zero you would have the v naught for the solution but that means that the tangent of theta has to be v naught squared over gr so that when you have the case where this velocity is the v naught you you have the case where you don't need any friction, you're gonna be balanced. And that's not a surprise. We already know that's the case. Well, see?
If there's no friction, we know that's the solution. So now we just put a V naught there. And if you want, you can then replace this equation with the, you could put the V naught squared over GR in both places. That's kind of cool to do. And I did that in the text for you. So we did that in the textbook where we put in the V naught squared over GR in both places, say, to get this cool equation and then multiply through by GR. And when we did that, we got this cool equation. And then we plug in numbers, which I'll let you go to the textbook to do that. And you find that the mu s is 0.1. That is what you need. And as a curiosity, I wanted to know what the banking angle was. And the banking angle, we have the V naught is the 64 kilometers per hour. We have the G, we have all that. So the banking angle here was 9.2 degrees, all worked out in the book for you. Then there's a bonus in the book. What I, what I do in the book for you is I say, well, suppose you were going faster and, you know, and faster, well, then you're going to be sliding, the tendency is to slide upward. And then what happens is the friction is going to be the opposite way. So let's go ahead and do that. This is, I'm going to show you the sketch out, but then you can look at the book to finish it. Uh, this is, this is say a, dot, a dotted line. So here really it's, it's this way. It's this way is the friction and the mg. So this is your setup. If your car is going faster now than what we were expecting in the earlier problem, so now the tendency is to, to slide up. How fast can you go about sliding up? So now the friction is down, and you, you work the problem the same way with the friction in the different direction, and you get this really nice formula that gives you the velocity that you can take the curve at the maximum. And when you plug in the numbers, you get 97 kilometers an hour, which is 60 miles per hour. It's kind of nice. Now that's a very, very good workout. Now I know that we're emphasizing here formulas without the numbers, but that gives a extra training because you always plug in numbers. So I think this is a good, a good thing to see lots of problems with the formulas.